What's going on guys? So I got the GameSir G7HE here. Now, I've had this controller for a little while. I've played with it on and off. To be honest with you, I have a lot of the new controllers that came out, but I'm just not putting those videos out here on YouTube only because literally they're all color variants of the controller I've already reviewed for the most part. Okay, so all these new controllers that are coming out, unless it's a, like a brand new controller for the most part, I'm just not going to mess with it. The G7 HE is somewhat of a new controller. It does have some of the similar features, pretty much all the features on it, but it is a little bit different. And also the Game Sir Tarantula controller that just came out. You guys and gals have probably been seeing some videos on that. I am planning on doing a full video on this because it does need its own video, but the controller isn't working right for me. I'm in contact with them. As soon as that controller gets working right and I can actually start testing it and getting it on the way, I'll drop it for you. But let's talk about the Game Sir G7 HE What's different about this between the G7 and the SE controller, and if you should buy it for a budget, well, controller or not. Now, GameStar did send this controller out for me. Honestly, it was for TikTok, but I'm doing it over here now. So you guys know, I'll let you know if it's a trash controller or not, and I'll give you my honest opinions on it because that's how we do things around here. Without further ado, let's talk about the controller. So coming in the box, it's really just every, every controller that GameStar offers is, if it's an Xbox official controller, which this one is, you're gonna get the controller itself, a nice long nylon cable or a USB type C to type A cable. Now the GameStar cables themselves, they are, what do you call it? They're like a, like a special, it's not special, it's just shaped smaller. So you have to use their cable. I have found other cables that will work, but just be aware of that. You gotta have their cable for it to work for the most part. I've found a small USB-C to go into the top of the controller for it to work. So the build quality on the controller itself, the faceplate does lift up and remove, as you can see, and you can replace this with any of the other variation colors out there where if you want to put the black white orange purple pink whatever face place they have they all fit they're all interchangeable so just keep that in mind if you want to collect all the controllers like pokemon cards or whatever gotta catch them uh, pokemon uh, oh my goodness i can't believe i just did that i'm leaving that in there you can uh, do that by the way all the controllers this controller and anything i'll talk about in the video is going to be linked below it does help the channel out so if you want to support me and the channel appreciate you other things on the controller itself from build quality wise going around the controller you do have those rubber kind of grips on the back of it they actually do feel pretty good they feel kind of like a rubber it's not plastic so I, it's it's they feel good. I like them. We'll see how long they last up, if they're going to wear out like the Elite or anything like that. They're not as comfortable as the Elite or anything like that, but they are decently comfortable itself. On the bottom of the controller, you do have a, a 3.5 millimeter cable here for the headphone port, of course. So you can use headphones on this controller. And I believe you can control it from holding the M button and hitting the D-pad back and forth. This will control your in-game chat and also your game volume itself. You have a mute button on the bottom of the controller itself as well that way if you just want to hit mute on the go you can let's get into the buttons of the controller itself you do have the tactile buttons on the xyba controller itself so if you like those tactile sounding buttons they definitely feel it they're easy to press in there's no really tension behind them when i'm pressing them in and honestly they feel really really good if i'm being honest myself the other thing it has on it is the hall effect sensors and the sticks themselves so you do get those in these sticks so you don't have to worry about drift essentially anyways you know these can develop stick drift uh high rise spring or something i don't think they, i don't know if these have the high rise spring in them i don't think so i think they switched over to the non high rise spring joysticks i can't remember let me know in the comments below if you do remember or not on these controllers i believe they did but in any case any controller can pretty much develop stick drift but the holofix sensors are more unlikely to develop stick drift we'll go ivy we'll go ivy we'll go ivy what Bro, what are you talking about, man? Into the controller sticks themselves and talk about if there's any stick drift or anything when we get to the software side. We'll do a quick overview of that since it's literally the same software that you can download on PC or Xbox. But if you're on Xbox, make sure you stick around to that. I can show you how to get a thousand hertz on the Xbox while using it on the PC and then switching over to Xbox. You might be, you know, worth it. Let's move on to the back of the controller itself. Now you do get the two buttons here themselves, the two back buttons. Now. 
Let me know in the comments below, what do you think a Pro Controller is? Do you think a Pro Controller should be something with four back buttons, Hall FX6, high rise, does it come with it? A wireless controller, can it be wired? What is the pulling rate? I, I want to know what your perfect Pro Controller is. My perfect Pro Controller, I'll put it in the first comment below so you can check it out and you just we'll just follow suit and see who's got a better idea for a Pro Controller. I'm curious. So you do have the triggers and the bumpers up top right here. They follow suit with all the rest of them. They have a little bit of a stipple or we'll call it, we'll call it gripple as we always do here on the channel. And you know, it's fine. It doesn't go all the way up to the top on the bumper itself, but it does go across the front of the trigger, but not around the side of it either. But for the most part, the controller is pretty comfortable in my personal opinion, playing with it and stuff like that. Let's go to the PC side of things and then we'll talk about it, show you a couple things, show you a couple hacks for the Xbox side, and then we'll wrap this up. So here's the app itself. You can download this to the PC or the Xbox. It's just a GameStar Nexus app. You can look it up. It's pretty simple to get. I'll link it down below if I remember anyways. Anyhow, you can come in here. We'd always recommend just updating the controller. Once you plug it in, it'll just immediately pop up. You'll be good to go. I'm updated as you can see here. You can come here and mess with your vibrate the controller if you want to see if it's working. I don't know, but I think it's kind of useless being there. All right, so Xbox players, we'll talk about this first so you can get out of here if you don't want to look at the app any further. So right here is the 250. This is what your typical Xbox would be on. This is not on the Xbox. It's not there. They've taken it off. Well, there's a few reasons. One, Microsoft doesn't want it and doesn't allow it to be there. So they kind of had to take it off based on that. And two, once you go past a thousand or once you go past 500, you lose your headphone port. So wired headphones can't go past 500. Keep that in mind what I'm about to tell you. From my understanding, when you turn this to 500 or a thousand, what happens is it flashes to the controller and it remembers it based on the controller. So if I were to close this program out and not run this program, it's still at a thousand hertz going, which means we can unhook the controller after you do this on the PC, hook it up to the Xbox, you have a thousand hertz. Now, if you have a headphone port or if you use wired headphones, don't use a thousand because you'll lose that, use 500 and you're good to go. Other things you could do, as you can see out here, we'll go right back real quick. You have four different profiles. Default is a profile, profile one, two, and three. So you can use the controller and control those as well. So once you get this all set up, you're good to go. You really don't even need to touch this no more. But you can come in here, super simple. Set your back buttons up. If you're curious on what I play Call of Duty like with two buttons, this is it right here. Your sticks, you can play with raw or, you know, not raw. Uh, somebody told me to do raw, so I've been using raw uh, this entire time. Oh, I just started using it. So if the gameplay looks good and I seem good, then I guess I'm good with it. Other things is you can come over here and turn hair triggers on if you want. There's different ways of doing it. You can turn this down too if you want to. doesn't matter. It's pretty much do the same thing from my understanding. So just click on hair triggers if you want to keep it simple. And then you have vibrations here. I turn them off, of course, when I'm playing FPS shooter games and multiplayer. And that's really, that's, that's, that's really the app in a nutshell. Let's look at sticks. All right, so we're here to the sticks and the self, as you can see here on screen, the perfect resting value. Now, if you remember in the app, there were at point or that 5% or something like that. So what I'm going to do is actually come in here, turn this down. Oh, wow. That's at 10%. Why is default at 10%? That is horrible. First of all, we're going to turn this down to zero just so we can see. And I'm going to go back into the online. And as you can see, they're not perfectly centered. That's because of the Hall effect sensors are super sensitive. So just keep that in mind. If you want to, you can come in here and play with this until you get it up. Maybe 2% will be good and I'll be centered completely. Uh, really, really close. There you go. As you can see, 2% seems like that worked for the most part. I'm not worried about it. I'll keep it there 2%. We we'll test circularity. It should be really low for the most part, but it's not. Why is it not low? because I have them in raw. If I put them back in, if I put this back in uh, non-raw, you'll see it go down. The reason why is because the reach of raw reaches further than it does in non-raw. And you're about to see that right now. Turn these off, come back in here. Now when I do it, as you can see, they're good. So if you turn raw on, just keep that in mind. It's not that it's bad. You just have a further reach. Some people like it. Some people say this is better right here for FPS. I don't know. I'm, I would say just do whatever you feel comfortable with and test it. And if you feel better playing with them on raw, play with them on raw. If not, 
don't I, I don't care let's do a quick speed test and we'll close the app out just so i can prove to you it does work with a thousand hertz with the app slows out and i'll unplug the plug controller and plug it back in just to prove a point all right so here is the app itself i'm gonna come up here to x exit it out and see if it's on the background right here i don't see it anywhere in the background as you can see there we're gonna even bring up process system properties do, 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 so we can see there anything running nope do, 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 background nope so i set this to a thousand before we did this so we should be good to go now we're going to take it off i'm going to unplug it why not plug it back in just to prove my theory now it's been unplugged it's plugged back in now we're going to rotate the stick and see well i gotta reopen it it looks like <laughs> okay now we're gonna reload stick, rotate, we're gonna rotate stick, which should be a thousand. Okay, we're not at a thousand. <laughs> we're like 500. Did I set this to 500? Did I set it to 500? I did, I set it to 500. Well, that explains why we were at 500. We're gonna set it to a thousand, close the app. We're gonna close this. We're gonna unplug the controller, plug the controller back in, open it up, and now we should be at a thousand. So the controller is found. There you go. So if it's unplugging the controller, turn the app off or, uh, you know, accident, exiting out of the app and everything keeps it at a thousand. So it flashes it to a thousand, which means it will work being, you know, on the uh, Xbox at a thousand if you wanted to. Pro tip. So the GameStar HE controller being at a $50 budget price point, I honestly don't see a problem with it personally on the Xbox being a wired pro controller pro-ish controller you have the back buttons you have the hall effects you have the tactile buttons and you do have it's just a decent built controller so this is definitely i i can recommend controller right now on amazon when i was checking it out to see what the price was because they do change all the time there is a five percent coupon code so make sure when this video releases you can check that out links in the description below if you want to check that out and help the channel out i appreciate that very much but if you're looking for something that has more than two buttons, maybe you're just wanting something on the PC that's wireless, then check out some of these videos I did over here to my side with the other controllers and stuff on the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, peace and love.